The times are changing for the auto industry very significantly. CO2 emissions, you look at you know, safety, all these things, and those need to be addressed. And uh, GM is on the path to get that done, right? So GM has a zero, zero, zero strategy, zero emissions, zero crashes, zero congestion. Thank you for this time, for taking the time to be with me today. Thank and you for having me here yeah, yeah, yeah. today. Listen, this is the first time you've done a podcast, right? Right, it's yeah. the first time. So I don't know what to do, where I am, and probably I'm a bit nervous. Okay, that's good. But I will go with the flow. All right, that's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> where were you born? Let's start off with where were you born? I was born in uh, Tokyo okay. 54 years ago. 54 years ago. Are one of your parents Japanese? Yes, my mother is Japanese, my father is German. But you got more of your father than your mother. Yeah, you know, this part is probably more Japanese <laughs> than this one. <laughs> so, but people tell me that. But if I'm amongst uh, people like me, uh, mixed, then you then, can see it. Then they know. Do you have siblings? No, I'm the only one. Are your parents still alive? Are they doing yes, that? they live in Germany. They live in Germany? Yes. Well, how old is your father now? Just my father it. turned uh, 90 last year, and my mother is turning this year 80. So you're the only child? Yes, I'm the only one. So that's a challenge because my parents are in Germany. So. Do you speak to them regularly? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, just yesterday we talked about an hour. You can say something to them now. Speak to your Yo. mom and dad now. Hello, mom. <laughs> Hello, dad. How are you? Are you watching my YouTube? <laughs> Good to see you. I hope you can turn it on, though. So do you, were you raised here in Japan? Yes, I was raised in Japan for the first 10 years I lived here in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my parents moved over to Germany, so of course I moved with them. Okay. And but for the first 10 years, did you go to Japanese school or did you go to no, the I German went to school? a German school. At that time it was in Omori. Right. Uh, today it's in Yokohama, right. but at that time it was uh, a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived at that time in uh, Kuhonbutsu, which is next to Jiuaoka. Mm -hmm. And when I was little, I took a uh, bus, school bus. And then after I grew a little bit, took the train every day. Did you speak to your mother in German or did you speak to her in Japanese? My mother always talked to me in Japanese. My father always in German. She still does that? Uh, she still does that, yes. Right. And but when they speak together? That was English. Wait just a minute. Your mother and father would... Wait, your father and mother would speak in English? That was their uh, first common language actually they had when they got to know each other. So when you grew up, did you, wait, so when you grew up, how many languages did you speak? Or did you my know? parents tell me that the first language I picked up was English because I listened to my parents. Okay. They were talking English with each other. Right. And then of course Japanese because um, the neighborhood is Japanese, surroundings is very Japanese. Mm -hmm. But then also German because I started to go to German kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And so, so those, those were the languages I was dealing with yeah. at that time. Was your father much older than your mother? Are they about the same age? Uh, my father's about 11 years older than my mother. No, so, that's interesting. So, yeah, it's interesting thing is um, my father came to Japan in the 1950s working for a German company. Mm -hmm. And my mother, she was working for the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> that is really interesting because don't forget, we just finished a war. Right. Okay, right. so that's not such a... <laughs> well, I, I understand Japan and Germany still being close because they were together yeah. in the war. <laughs> anyway, so, but she's at the U.S. Embassy now. Yes, she was, she was a secretary uh, working at the U.S. Embassy. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and the reason was she was a little bit different than probably other Japanese ladies at that time, you know, very open-minded, interested in foreign languages. And so she got a job at the U.S. Embassy. So that's um, where she was. So she could speak English very mm -hmm. fluently. Mm -hmm. And my father, of course, comes to Japan. He's a German, so the only language he can use mainly here is English at that time. Right. Right, and Japan, and Japanese see. was still not not that good for my uh, what so so my, my father was speaking English, so mm -hmm. that's how they met. Uh, okay, and then they dated for a while, and then they mar married. And yes, they married. Uh, they married in nineteen sixty seven. Okay, 
Uh, and there's an interesting story where they met. They met at a uh, reception at the South Vietnamese par uh, embassy. <laughs> wow. Dude. And we still have a this card, the invitation card of the reception hanging at the wall. In, in, in 67. 67, yes. That That's Vietnam War. Exactly. Yeah. That's Vietnam War. And so there was still the, uh, the country called South Vietnam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where they met in that embassy here in Tokyo somewhere. And do you, what, what kind of work did your father do? Was he worked in the automotive industry for okay. an automotive supplier. Okay. Um, and, and so was dealing with Japanese auto companies a lot uh -huh. and supplying parts. Is that what got you interested in automotive? So probably that and actually my grandfather and my grand-grandfather were <coughs> also in the automotive industry already. So that's probably the whole thing and I, uh, I grew up actually after Tokyo in Germany I said and uh, that was in Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. So everything is about automotive there. So you know you just don't select, you, you just grow into this. <laughs> Okay. So, so okay. F what was schooling like for you here in Japan <coughs> at the German school? You had a lot of kids like yourself at the German school. Right. Right. But you had probably more pure Germans, you know, quote unquote, that were just German mother and father, than you had maybe half. Or would you say it was equal? It was. Uh, it was half and half, I guess. Okay. Right. And uh, and so there were there was of course the expat community here coming in for three years and flying back again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there were friends I had who had the same background as I have, and we still are friends together today, That's and right. meet. Uh, they still live. Some of them still live here. Okay. In Tokyo, so it was it was a very um, let's say international kind of an environment. Did you deal with many of the kids from the American school? Yes, of course. Saint Mary's, well, of course, Saint Mary's. That's where we had uh, our swimming lessons. Of course, we went to Saint Mary's and they had a swimming pool. Our right. school didn't have that. Right, right, right. And so there were um, a lot of interactions okay. uh, with international school in Yokohama. Yeah, right. And, and you know, it's it's a small world. It is. But at the same time, though, I lived in Jugaoka, which is very Japanese. So, so when I was at home, I had my, all my Japanese friends. Do you yeah. still have any of those? I have still some of those, yes. Did you remember from when you were a kid here? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. So you, you developed your Japanese really well. Of course, your German's perfect because you did all of your elementary school through Germany, basically, after, the t after 10 years old. Yes, and then after that we moved to Germany, so I went to the German education That's system right. until university. What were your sub what subjects, what sports did you like first of all? What kind of sports? I liked uh, skiing and, uh, and as well as bicycling. Before you went to Germany? Or Before we went to Germany, yes. So the, the, the winners were really good for you, you look forward to the winners. Here. Exactly, exactly. Skiing, I was just uh, ski crazy. Your yes. father likes skiing too, and your mother? Uh, actually, my parents really don't do much sports, right? <laughs> so they just sent me into. I think oh, they really? wanted to just send me to somewhere, right? <laughs> that was a great idea to really? send me there. Yes. yes. You, did you ever want to have brothers and sisters when you were young? Yeah, I asked my mother. I remember that why I don't have any sisters and brothers. But in the end, I saw them people with siblings, and they were just fighting every day. <laughs> so I thought that was uh, not that bad to be. By yourself. By myself. And they have to share presents and exactly. they have to get hand me down and exactly. hand me down. <laughs> exactly. Oh everything you got was yours. Exactly. <laughs> so so I didn't have have to go through that. So I, I found it comfortable after a while. Did you really? Yes. How old do you think you were when you felt mm, it's not so bad being the only child? It's probably when I was nine or ten years okay. old. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you're deep into skiing, you like winter sports? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you like anything else like soccer or? Or soccer, of course. And then also when we when I lived here in Japan, uh, the German school also had in the afternoons uh, baseball. Okay. So I played baseball there. I like that too. Okay. So, but soccer, soccer a lot. So when you went to Germany, how did it change for you? Because I'm sure that had to be a little. Yeah, it was a different environment. Um, you know, I was, of course, used to Germany because my parents took me twice a year to Germany. And so you had friends, so did I you had have friend, do you have um, cousins there? Your yeah, I had cousins, family? but we, we were, you know, they were all far, living far apart, so I didn't really meet them. But, you know, uh, my, I had my grandparents or grandmother and my grand-grandmother uh, living there. So, 
So, um, you know, later we moved into that same area. So I knew a lot of those friends in the neighborhood mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. And I went with some of them to the school. Right. So I already knew before I went to Germany or moved to Germany uh, how this works and I had already some contacts. Okay. So that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But it, w it was a different environment because here in Japan when you were in a foreign community, you were kind of raised in a special world, right? Um, I wouldn't call it a bubble, but it's a little bit different than mainstream. And then you go to Germany, my home country, it's a lot rougher. How? Right? How? What's rough? Uh, people are more, um, you know, they're coming from all levels of society, so to speak, right? And, uh, and, and some are more, let's say, direct and straightforward and, you know, you just punch you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't belong here? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, who are you kind of a thing. <laughs> so you have to punch back. You know, that's that's uh, that 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 was one thing, right? Okay. So so it's a bit more rough, and uh, but it was fun because I think it was important for me because um, uh, you get stronger. So right? so what happened to you? So when you went to school, what do you yes. remember? I think I was nervous, of course. You know, there were some bully kind of people, of course, as well, and <laughs> the big guys. You know, and he says, hey, you know, and this guy is not even fully German, right? But they can, but they can look at you and tell. Yeah, but, you know, they, they, they got to know. If they found, over, over time, they find it out, right? Okay. And then they say, hey, you're not even a German. <laughs> Whoosh. Kind of a and thing. So what so would you do? What was your response? I would just um, hit back, right? Okay. And then, and then the first few weeks was uh, pretty rough because, you know, every day I came back uh, with some bruises and stuff. <laughs> But uh, but after a while, I think they, they we got along very well actually, and uh, and probably because I punched back right. And you did right away. Of you course, had no problem about that. No, not at all. Because if, if I'm getting punched, I of course punch back, right? Was that the way your father trained you or something, or did he? Yes, my father always said, you know, don't 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 uh, have people buzz you around. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> You're yourself, and you have to stand up yourself, and so right. so that's how. I know probably that was what helped me. Uh -huh. Was he was he physical with you ever? Was Mario? No. So if I didn't do something or something, he just grabs me the neck and and say, "Here, you get the stuff done here. Clean your room and things like that." So what was your mother that's... like? What was your mother like? Uh, mother was similar. You know, oh really? She, yeah, 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 mother was also similar. But you know, again, uh, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, you know, I think it was just normal at that. Yeah. Time. You know, you wouldn't do it today anymore, but no. not, not that time. But it was not really hurting, really. I, I understand because you're the only child again, right. Right. right? right, right. And they didn't know. No one teaches parents how to parent. Yes, yes. And they do usually what was done to them. Right, right. By and their parents, and they feel I turned out okay. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's what you're gonna get. And I'm doing less than they did to me. Yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah if you look at my parents, uh, you know, their parents grew up in their 19th century. That's right. right. So it's about 140 years ago when they were raised. Well, so it was a different, different world then. Really different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you, how long? So you stayed in Germany for how long? You went through school there. You I went to school there and then uh, went to university, and then I was until you know it takes longer in Germany sometimes to. Were study. you good academically? It was okay. It was okay. You know, I was doing all kind of other stuff than really studying. Okay, what was the other stuff that you were doing? Um, because I had all my language capabilities, right? I used them as uh, being interpreter, translator. So it was good money at that time. Oh, so, you were, so you said, screw the school. I'm going to go ahead and make some money. Exactly. You what age, what age did you start doing that? Uh, actually, I started when I was uh, 16 or 17 years old. You know, my, I got some opportunities. Hey, you know, there's... I'm in Germany, right, in Stuttgart. There's a lot of suppliers and auto companies, right, working right. globally right. and supplying global auto manufacturers. And so that's, I got into doing some interpretation when some engineers came and then some development of vehicles with the suppliers. So, hey, you know, they couldn't talk to each other. So, hey, they hired me and I did the uh, translation. Did your father help you with how much you should be paid or tell you what you should be paid? Or? Um, Actually, there was a running rate. Actually, my mother did it f 
uh, from time to time. And that's how I actually got to it, because my mother didn't have the time to do everything. So she said, you know, oh, she was you doing that too. She was doing it a little bit too. Yeah. And so she said, hey, why wouldn't you do this? Maybe interesting for you. And so, yeah, yeah, why not? And okay. it was good money. Oh, wow. So you had your first car when you were what? I was uh, 18, when I was 18. I did you first. buy it, or did you have your parents buy it? No, I, I, I bought it myself, it's, but it was, it was a rusty something. It was still a car, right? It was a car, it was running, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the, in sports, were you still heavily involved in sports? I did soccer, but uh, actually um, less so. Um, I went skiing, of course, and things like that, but, uh, but I did more... Uh, I don't know. What did I do, actually? If I think about it, I wasted a lot of time with nothing, I guess. <laughs> but you say, but you're translating. <laughs> yes, that's what I did, of course. Translate, I so did. So you, you didn't hang out with your buddies so much? I, I hang, no, I, yeah. I did, did with, I did a lot with hang out with my buddies. So that's what I'm saying, you know, wasted in some ways. Well, for okay, so when like, you guys hang out with your buddies in Germany and stuff like that, you guys drinking beer, was that a big thing? Oh, yes, of course. Beer, that was a big thing. Okay. Beer, and wine, stuff. and okay. all that stuff. Okay, and that we do stuff, right? crazy stuff and partying. And every really? Saturday, Friday nights, Saturday partying. Uh, that so was you, you had a real healthy young life. Oh, yes, man. yes. That's, so that's why. Um, if I think about what I did, okay, yeah. I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. All right, yeah. so then you finished high school. Yeah. And what's, you said the system's a little different than it is in the U.S. Like we finish high school, the 12th grade, we go to 12, 12 years of schooling, then we go into college. Yeah, and there you have, in Germany at that time, you had 13 years. 13 years. Right, 13 years school, and then uh, you also go to, to college or university, what you call, and uh, it's not that difficult to get in there, it's more difficult to get out, so it takes yeah. forever to get out, right? That's America too, in a way. Because you don't want to just risk something and so it takes forever until you you get out you so, want to be good so how many there. years uh i went there actually uh seven years college seven years i went to university seven years yeah. so you're in school for 20 years uh kind of, <laughs> kind yes. of yeah because i did all the other stuff right uh when i was uh, university so. so what were you studying in university what were you the subjects um you? economics economics you enjoyed and then, that? And then, and then business, yes. Both. I, I enjoyed that very much, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, but at the time also, again, I did translations and I got into uh, communications work. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I did, it, I had my one-man agency, which was helping um, launches of new cars, right? This is Stuttgart. In Stuttgart, from Stuttgart, but it was like I had Japanese companies I was working for as well as German car companies I was working for and what happened is so like the first work I had in that respect was um, when Nissan came out with their GTR the first one they uh, they invited a bunch of Japanese journalists from Japan to the Nürburgring right? Wait, this is what year it was in 1988 1988 yes okay and so there comes 20, 30 journalists from Japan to test drive the, uh, the GTR on Nürburgring. And um, that's where I coordinated everything from logistics and, and translation and all these things. So I got into that kind of work. And, uh, and then I worked for some other companies like, uh, you know, big uh, ja other Japanese and German auto mm -hmm. companies. And I helped them when they had their test drives in Europe. And I did that actually for for many years, in parallel to my studies, and that's probably why I got my job after I was done with my studies at uh, at uh, GM. I You've been with, with them since. Yes, uh, twenty six years. Wow. So, what was your first job? Communications, PR, at GM. Right, because I knew all the journalists. Right. Okay. I dealt with them in my previous work as a uh, one man. Agency. So what are some of the exciting things that happened for you? When did you think that I'm in the right place? I like, I like this. I think, um, I think I liked cars always, right? So since I was little, and I had all these toy cars, and you know, when I w looked at cars, then I already knew which car that was, and so, so that was um, what I liked. 
um, also my environment, as I said, my, you know, my, my, my father, my grandfather, my grand-grandfather, all in automotive industry, and then I grew up in Stuttgart, when I, my buddies at school, you know, half of them are kind of related with, you know, to parents who do have something to do with the auto industry. So it's, a, it's such kind of community, so you grow up in there. One day, and I think I was uh, about 20 or 21, I thought, you know, I may not want to end up in this automotive industry thing. It, there may be something, a different kind of a world. Okay. So with my language uh, background, I um, hired into, um, on, a, on a summer job, translation job, for a summer at Nintendo. So that could be something interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a time when um, the Game Boy, the Game Boy mm -hmm. was just launched. Right, and uh, it was still a very small office. It was the first two months. Nintendo wanted to start selling that in Germany, so I was in that small office, and that was pretty cool. You know, uh, you you have those big boxes, you know, with all these Game Boys. It was really small, right? Right. right. After a year, it was a huge <laughs> facility. That's right. Well, it was just in the beginning, and uh, and then you have all these characters, and you know. I work with some software companies to help them to do their uh, translation of the mm -hmm, software, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and so that was interesting. So, so I thought that may be something where I may end up with, but in the end, I, I went back to cars. How long did you stay with Nintendo? I did that work actually uh, two years, okay. you know, again as a freelancer. Right. And that was a lot of fun. I bet it was. Yeah. And, uh, exactly, especially. And, uh, but again, it, I don't know, it, I came back to cars because that's what I, I like. Okay. Uh, and you plan on, you think this is something you're going to do indefinitely? Yeah, for now, yes, I guess, mm -hmm. yes. Because I, but I'm already, you know, 54, so, right. so, um, yeah, I think that I'm, I'm, for now I'm sticking to it, but if there's something different coming along, you know, I'm always open. But, right, right. but it's, it's a lot of fun. So what are some of the things that keep you interested in it right now? What's happening with the uh, GM? So what keeps me actually going is really um, the times are changing for the auto industry very significantly. CO2 emissions, you look at you know, safety, all these things, and those need to be addressed. And uh, GM is on the path to get that done, right? So GM has a zero, zero, zero strategy, zero emissions, zero crashes, zero congestion. So one key pillar of that will be to uh, introduce more and more electric, battery electric vehicles. Also um, autonomous vehicles, that is the other one. You know, you want to avoid crashes, you want to, you know, have less congestion. So you have to automate uh, the vehicles significantly more than they are today. Mm -hmm. And so that is something really, especially when I look at my daughter, you know, she's six years old, you know, and I want to do something for her and for her friends and say, hey, you know, we may not be able to forever burn fossil fuels and, uh, and, 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 and uh, live a place which, uh, which may be not as perfect as it should be. And so that's actually what keeps me going. So the work I'm currently doing is um, I'm working on the strategic side of the business. And uh, you may know that uh, GM has a, a strategic partnership with Honda, a Japanese auto company. And uh, I'm in charge of that relationship between both companies, which is very exciting because both companies are really looking in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You know, zero emissions, automation, mm -hmm. And, and that's what keeps me going. You know, George, there's something that I'm just curious about. This is a little bit off the subject, but still in the subject. In Japan, you know, and I know, that Honda, Subaru, um, Nissan, Toyota, mm -hmm. are just the names, mm -hmm. but they all work together. <laughs> they work together in some ways, but not really. Right, really? so they're working together because they're Japanese companies, right? And of course, uh, they're working also with the Japanese government. You know, they are sitting in the same committees and so forth. 
but they are also fierce competitors in the market. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and so they do have all different strategies mm -hmm. uh, set, set right. forth. Now, if you look at the Japanese auto industry, it's basically, you know, I mentioned Honda is of course one. You mentioned Nissan. Mm -hmm. Nissan is now with uh, Renault, so it's kind right. of um, half French, half Japanese, right? And then you have the rest, which is all kind of related to Toyota, right? right? And 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 I see that um, that Honda actually plays a very key role here because it's not related to Toyota, right? And so will will be important for uh, continuing to keep to keep some competition in that mm -hmm. system here going, okay. and I think that's what they're doing. What's it like in What's it like in the U.S. with GM? Is GM really close with Ford? Is Ford really <laughs> close with? Yeah, we're 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 competitors, of course, right? But, but we do we do have some activities together, uh -huh. right? So Same we do time. have with Ford. We do have a uh, joint venture for or a joint activity for transmissions. Okay, so the same thing happens in Germany with yes Mercedes yes. and. Yes, mm -hmm. it comes. It comes down to you know because the market requirements are similar. Like you know, if you're in U.S., there are mm -hmm. U.S. market requirements. You know, maybe for the market or regulations. You know, same thing in Europe, same thing in Japan, and so there are some some ways to collaborate, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but 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 still competing, right. and then the other piece is we're using also very similar suppliers too, right? Right. So a lot of the same parts. Are, everyone's using some of them. Are yeah. Generic. So everybody, everyone's you know, using. everybody uses I don't know Bosch or Denso, right. you know, or the Springs or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so, so there is a lot of intermingling exactly. there, but exactly. we are competitors right. still. But Japan still is a little more homogenous than the other countries. Yeah. yeah. Although Honda starts trying to be, I think the 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 the, how do you say, the the guy who's who's trying to be different. Right. Well, they, made a, like they made, finally made what they always wanted, their plane. Yes. That was the wing the on plane, the Honda. Yes. They, he always wanted that. Yes. And now he has and they plane. And they do have a huge motorcycle business, which is... Well, that's what you That's why everyone knows yes. Honda. They and then uh, uh, also uh, power products. The power products, meaning yeah. generators and oh, yes, things. Oh, yes, 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 very of course, big. yeah. So there is a li they're a little bit different than the rest of the pack, I would okay. think. Anything you'd like to leave us with, George? <laughs> do you, this part was going to come. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get. Mm, yeah. yeah, I think um, it is great being here in Tokyo, actually. Don't you think so? Yes. And, uh, and well, I, do you want to live anywhere else, do you think? Or do you think you're going to... For now, I, I think I'm going to stay here. And we'll, you're going to raise your daughter up through here for sure? For, for, yes. For Are now, you, yes. Is she going to be the only child, too? And you're going to explain to her why you only wanted to have one, <laughs> so she can have everything herself? Uh, do we need to have to discuss this here? No, we don't. No, 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 we don't. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. That's uh, it's fine. So, anyway, yes. Um, but 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 again, I think uh, it's a great environment to be here in, in Tokyo, and you know, because there's interesting people everywhere where you go, and, and you know, you are there, and you know, all the others, you know, like I saw right. some of your right. podcasts there. Right. You know, right. I know these guys. Isn't that isn't that interesting? <laughs> yes. But you did not know them. No, no. Isn't that interesting? No. You knew them, but you didn't know them. Right. And on the podcast, you get to know them. They're going to do the same thing when they see you. Yes. You know what? I didn't know he was part German <laughs> and part Japanese. <laughs> right. I bet you they're going to say that. A lot of people are going to say that. Right. Because you do look more European than you do Japanese. Right, right. right? You didn't get the almond shape as much in your eyes as the yeah. a lot of some other kids yeah. do. Yeah, but you know what? We're, we're, there's a funny story, though. Okay. That one. So, um... When I went to uh, on vacation to Morocco a couple of years ago, you know, the first day I go get there, I'm shaved. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking to me in German or English. Right. Okay. It grows. Everybody talks to me in French. Okay. After a week, everybody's talking to me in Arabic. <laughs> right. You're a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, I don't speak any Arabic. I said, you must be kidding me. You, you must speak you Arabic. <laughs> you mean, because you look just like it. Yes. <laughs> I saw I was uh, one of them. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I find that with my sons, too, because my wife's Japanese. Yes. They pretty much can go to certain areas. Like, they think they're Brazilian sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they think they're Filipino. They yeah. think they're Tocalo. Have you, you've been to Dubai, I'm sure. Yes. You've been all around. Yes. I went to Dubai, and I saw that as just being Las Vegas on steroids yes it's just oh 
Yes, it's amazing. And you can't enjoy outside as much yeah. as you can in Las Vegas because it's hot. It's too hot there, yeah. It's just all and done. it's uh, more humid than I thought it would be. Oh, that place is no joke. Yes, yes. You don't yes. see waves, you just see the water just. The water yeah. doesn't want to move, it's so hot. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. Otherwise, it would sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it would sweat and it evaporates. Yes. I'll stay right here. Yeah, right. This is really interesting. Yeah. Well, look, I want to thank you so much, George, for taking the time to be here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Lance, having me. Right. And uh, see you around then here in this small you community. Will. I'll have to have you back on again, too, and then sure. you won't be as nervous. You'll look at it and think, wow, this yeah. is nice. Yeah, I have a lot more to talk about. You do. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure you press like and subscribe. And remember, it's all on loan, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed.